Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. So glad you're back. We're continuing with our journey to build out the history view of the Starbucks application. Last episode, we saw how to parse the JSON required in order to get us the data for our view. In this episode, we're gonna actually dive in and take a look at how to create the actual HTTP call, which calls out to this AWS uh, web service, gets back the information, and then serves it up to us in a form we can understand something like a transaction. So if you're interested in how URL session or URL task works, come on in and we'll take a look and see how these work in Swift. Before we dive into the code, let's just take a quick recap of where we are. Last episode, we took some AWS JSON and parsed it and converted it into a Swift transaction. So if you missed that, feel free to go back, check out that episode on JSON parsing, and you can see how we can take some JSON from an AWS HTTP request and bring it in and create some Swift objects from that. In this episode, now we're gonna dive into how to actually make the HTTP call itself. And here we're gonna look at two classes, URL session and URL task. So basically when it comes to networking with HTTP and Swift, there's really just two main abstractions you really need to be aware of. One is the URL session, which you can think of as like a tab in your browser. That's the thing that's actually gonna contain the request that's gonna go out. And then two, it's this thing called a URL task. This is the class which is actually gonna go out and either request data, it can upload data, it can download data, and it's really these two that we're mostly gonna be working with when we go and look at the code. So with that now, let's create a brand new project, jump into the code and see how to make an HTTP request in Swift. Okay, so let's start off like we normally do. Let's create a brand new project and just create a request from scratch. So let's fire up Xcode and then go Shift Command N to create a brand new project. We're just gonna go ahead and create a brand new single view app. And I'm gonna call mine HTTP Spike. And I'm just gonna save that right on the desktop. And let's just resize things to give us a bit of space here. Okay, and we're good to go. So let's start by just creating a new file here. I'm just gonna click on my HTTP Spike directory here. I'm gonna go Command N to create a new file. This is gonna be a Swift file. And let's call this history service. This is the class where I'm gonna show you how to do an HTTP request and actually call out and get back some data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy some code in here, then we're gonna walk this and I'll explain everything that's going on. So to begin with, this is some work that we did in the previous episode. This is the Swift structure, which is ultimately gonna represent the JSON that we get back from this web service. So here we created a structure called history. This is what's gonna contain our history of transactions. And then we have a transaction here, which represents all the elements in the JSON that we're getting back. As a reminder, this is the JSON we're parsing from this URL here. This is an AWS web service. We're calling the endpoint to your history. These are the transactions we're gonna get back. And all we're doing here is translating them into a transaction and history. Those are gonna be the Swift rep representations of what we do. Okay, but setting that aside for a second, let's just take a look at this thing called an HTTP service and see what it does. This is just a struct, a regular struct called history service. It's got a shared static here, and this is just a common pattern you'll see with calling services. You create a static shared, meaning there's one instance of these, and you'll see how we actually use it. We go history service dot shared when we go to use it. And then this is the function called fetch transactions, which is actually gonna go out and make that HTTP request. All right, so let's just walk this and see what's happening. First of all, let's start with this URL. So this is just a URL we're creating of the website we want to call. So in this case, we're calling history, we're getting back that JSON, we create that in something called a URL. Then here's where that object comes in, URL session. Here we create, notice it's the same pattern here. Uh, Swift uses this pattern in their libraries too. They have a shared instance where they go URL session shared data task. And what we're doing here is we're creating a URL data task. 
this is the thing which is going to go out and do our HTTP GET. And in here, here's basically the processing that goes on after that request is made. We get back some data, a response, or an error. And notice that this is in a completion block. So this happens asynchronously. This doesn't happen instantaneously. It's not a blocking call. And the rest is just basically details around error handling and unpacking the data we get back. If we have an error here, we can call our completion block and pass in a result type of error. Now this is interesting. This result here, this is what, this is the return type of our completion block. And this is a specific Swift thing. Result is basically gonna contain the success of our call or an error. And it's basically just an enum that either has success or failure. And basically there's just two cases, success or failure. So you'll see when we actually go and get our response back and we actually use the result of this call, we're gonna unwrap it and do a switch basically based on this result here. So basically if there's an error, we just set an error and send that back in the failure of our result. Now here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. The data comes to us as an optional, so we need to unwrap it. And here we're unwrapping it in a guard clause. Here, we can also unwrap our response, which comes to us as an optional. And we can make that of type HTTP URL response. And we can actually check the status code coming back from our HTTP request. So if it's good, if it's between 200 and 299, that's a good HTTP request, then we'll continue processing. If it's not, if it's something like a 403, a 404, or a 405 internal server error, then we can also call that same completion block passing in a failure of a specific error types. And notice in Swift how these error types, service error, these are just enums ourselves. So we just create a server error of type enum. We can put whatever cases in here that we want. In this case, I've decided to call it a server error and we can pass back that here if we get like a 403. Now we actually get into the more interesting stuff. Here's where we actually do our JSON decoding. So last episode, this is where we saw how we could take data that comes in as JSON. That's how the JSON is coming in. We can decode it in a do catch here as a result of this try passing in the Swift object we want it to use for decoding, this history self, which we've defined up here. So this is the class we're coming in. This is gonna be the root of the JSON that we're parsing. And then finally, when we get it back, if everything works, we can send back just the transactions of that result uh, as part of our success. So transactions here, if we just take a look and remind ourselves what that's doing, this history object contains an array of transactions and those basically represent these transactions here in our JSON request. So this is an array of transactions. This root at the very top we call a history, we've called it history in Swift, and that's what's giving us back our result and that's what we're sending back uh, on the case of a success. So it's a bit of code. It looks a little convoluted because we're uh, doing error checking, we're unwrapping things, but it really comes down to this line here. This is where we actually take the JSON, unparse it, and if everything's there, we send it back as part of a transaction. Now the big thing to remember when working with URL session is when we're doing our work here, we are not on the main queue. Meaning this is a background thread that could be processing and running, we don't want to update the UI when we're not on that main UI thread because that would basically, it's not good. We always want to update our UI on the main thread. So that's why what you're seeing here is when we return that result back, we're putting it on something called a dispatch key, which is basically saying, take this result, put it back on the main thread. So when we return, the caller of this is free to update the UI without something bad going on. And we'll take a look at how that can affect things in just a bit. But that's basically the anatomy of an HTTP request. Let's now leave this here and go build a UI and try it out. Okay, let's go build a UI to test this out. Let's go back to our view controller. And all I wanna do here is I wanna create a label, which I'd like to populate with a number of transactions that'll prove that we're actually calling 
the HTTP correctly. And then a button so that when I click it, we initiate that call and update the label. That's all I really want to build here. So I've already typed out some code, which I'm going to save us some time with the typing, but I'll just walk through and explain to you what this is doing. So here, this is just our, we're in our view controller. We're just going to have two elements on the screen. We're going to have a label and a button. Actually, let me just run this so you can actually see what it looks like. So basically, we're just going to have a label and a button here. And here I'm just doing our standard style layout stuff. So when it comes to styling that label, we're gonna do this with auto layout. So we're just gonna set the constraints mask to be false for the label. We'll give it some text, number of transactions. Then we will create a button and also set it up for auto layout. We'll give it a nice background color of blue. We'll set the title to be fetch. Uh, here is a target we're gonna comment in in just a second, which is gonna actually do the fetching for us. And then this code here is just the layout. So we just add our label and our button to our view. Here's where we activate our auto layout constraints. The label, I'm just gonna center on the X and the Y of the view with these two constraints here. And then the button, I'm just gonna put a little bit below with a spacing of two, give it some width, also center it on the X, and that's basically the layout here. Okay, now let's comment in this. This is the target action on the button. This is the thing that's gonna do some work when we actually uh, tap it. And now let's bring in and fill in this fetch button and just see what this is doing. So down here, because this is a selector uh, on a UI button here, we need to add the Objective C uh, attribute here. O o -B, oops, OBJC. Basically, that's how we can call it. Okay, and UI kit. And this is a function called fetch button tapped and that should now make that compile okay and here's basically where we're going to call that history uh, service we just created and actually get back a result and update the label so let's just do that let's just go history service dot shared dot fetch transactions it's auto completing nicely for us and here this is where we're going to get back that swift result type so I'm just gonna call this result. Whoops. I'm just gonna hit enter and then go result. Then I'm gonna hit tab to go down to that blue code down here. And this is the thing that's gonna contain either our success or our failure. So I actually wanna switch on this. And this is a really nice construct that Swift's created for us. Here we can just go switch on result, set it up and it's going to be kind enough to uh, help us fill out our switch statement here for us yes and now when it comes to success this is something that you just have to know how this uh, how these result things work when you get back success and it's got a payload in here you unwrap it in something called a tuple don't worry about the language for now but basically this is going to be our transactions in here those are the transactions that we send back as a result of that request that we've parsed into JSON and created an array of. So those are our transactions there. And here we can just print out the number of transactions if we wanted. We can just print out their account to verify we got them. And in the failure case, um, we can also unwrap or make it, there's a tuple there representing the error of what's inside there. And we can just print out the error too in the event that we get an error. And that's basically all there is to actually calling the fetch translations and, and fetching it. Now I'm just gonna go command R to run this. Then I'm gonna go shift command Y to bring up the debug console at the bottom. And let's just see if when we tap that button, something interesting happens and we get a printout. So I'm gonna hit fetch. Hopefully it's gonna go and do the request. And there you can see the sixes are coming up. That means there's six transactions there. We've connected the dots, yay. Uh, we're getting some printouts, so that's great. Super, so we've made a successful HTTP request. But now I'd like to show you what happens if we are a little bit sloppy and we're not careful about how we handle that background processing thing. I'm gonna go Shift Command Y to minimize the debug here. Let's take that count and let's update our label, the text on our label based on that count. So let's say label.text is gonna be equal to the number of transactions.count. So when we hit this button, we'd like this to be updated to six. 
So let's just go Command R and run that again. And it's gonna complain because this is an int and not a string. So let's just wrap it in the constructor of a string and go Command R to try again. And again, it's saying that your reference property label is in a closure, so this needs to actually read dot self. All right, let's try again now and see if this compiles. And it does, hooray. And here we are. Now if we hit fetch, the number updates there. So that's super, that's great. That's exactly what we want. But watch this. Watch what happens if we come back into our history service. And in the successful case here, watch what happens if we don't dispatch that on the main queue and go Command R and run again. So now we're gonna make that HTTP request. We're gonna get the result, we're gonna pass it back, and then we're gonna to try to update the UI based on the number of transactions. Only we're not explicitly putting it back on the main dispatch queue. If we hit fetch now, it's going to uh, stumble around and think for a little while about what's going on. But eventually we should get some kind of error. Here it is. It kind of bottomed out on us and we got a bad instruction set. But if we go look at the debug here, look what it's saying. Main thread checker, UI API called on a background thread. That's a really good debug message it's giving us. That's really good output. It's basically told us you're trying to update the UI from a background thread, which of course we don't want to do. And if we go back into our view controller, there's even a nice little label here that says UI label text must be used from, I think it's gonna say main thread if I could expand that. Yeah, basically it's, it, it goes into the explanation of what the main thread checker is doing and basically how your label must be uh, updated only on the main thread. And that's a really nice output. That's why it's, you gotta be a little bit careful when doing these HTTP requests. Make sure that when you get the result, you do dispatch it back on the main thread. And I'm not even sure exactly what happens in the event of an error, but I've been very careful here. I've wrapped everything that returns in the completion block on a dispatch main queue. So if we did update the UI, we would be okay. Okay, so just to quickly recap, this is really good. You now know how to make an HTTP request to an AWS instance, take that JSON response, parse it out, and now use it in your application. So, so good on you, that's really good. Come back, in the next episode, you're gonna see how we're gonna take the result of this request and actually create a view, a UI table view, that is gonna be ready to be populated as a result of this call. Okay, thanks so much for coming, everyone. We'll see you next time. I hope you're enjoying this series. Come back and we'll dive in and learn even more. Till next time, bye-bye.